At South Piedmont Community College's Center for Technology and Health Education, students such as Sharika Barino have been working side-by-side -side with Director of Advanced Manufacturing Technology, Mike Willard, learning engineering technologies that will increase their competencies in the workforce. Everybody makes their own little plate, different little plates and stuff. They can create their own uh, whatever they want to put on it. And uh, Sharika chose she Gemini, so she wanted to do the Gemini symbol and they have to take and figure out where all these points are. Sometimes it takes trigonometry, they gotta, but they got to pick a zero, and all of this is done um, from zero. All these lines, they have to know all the start and end points and whether they're curved or whatever. So she chose this. And uh, so I showed that her, her artwork, her, she, where she drew it out on a pad, and then she had to figure out where all these corners were. And um, then once she and then she had to write the program with all the G codes and M codes, G01, G1, and you know all of the G codes to move it around the plate. And then we took it over to uh, a simulator, and she's got to put all that data in. And the main thing is she got to be accurate. Everything's got to be right. The numbers got to all add up, or the machine gets into trouble, goes where you don't want it to go. And she did that, run it through the simulator, which. Uh, gives a chance to check your program, catch your errors, because once you get to the machine, it's got to be right. Once we get the machine, they got to set a part in, they got to find where the zero is. We have tools to go and touch off to get where the data information all comes from, called a datum or a program zero. So then everything is measured from that one spot. So then she runs it again through graphics out here to make sure nothing's change in the meantime and now we're at real time in real life and touch all our tools off to know exactly where they are and then um, and step through the program. They step through it by being very quick. They got to try to any mistakes they hadn't caught before they got to catch them or it creates a crash so you have to keep your fingers on the go button and the stop button and go through and anything you see that maybe doesn't look right you got to stop it and think about it, and you got to catch your mistakes. And the beauty of this is that's what makes this modern-day machining. Once you make one part, you can make a thousand more parts exactly the same. Where back in the old days, they'd have to start from point one again and have to make set the machines, a manual machine. So CNC is just for for production, heavy production. When I first started this program. I was very adamant about making it and advertising it for females too because this is a field where females typically are better than guys. They're, they're more detail oriented. You know, you know, we have to, we usually try to take shortcuts. Women are more apt to be more detail oriented, do it the right way. When I started this program, nobody does it as a con ed class, continued education. That means they come in, we do four hours a day, four days a week for 10 weeks. So it isn't like you got to have two hours on a Tuesday, two hours on a Thursday. This is, this is too difficult to do that. You got to stay right in. It's like you got to just jump in, you know, and get right into it. Um, and nobody else does it. But by being immersed and doing it four hours a day, four days a week, and that's plenty, that gives me time to answer emails on Friday. And believe me, that's, everybody feels that's plenty of work for that week. This field is um, very big. It's, like I'm told, this is the hardest job there is to fill. CNC manufacturing, believe it or not, is coming back. There's more and more manufacturing. You know, you hear the politicians talk about it. It's all, they're trying to bring this stuff back here, make it, you know, on American soil. And, uh, and this is a hard job to fill. But this is a this is a much needed little piece of the pie here because it has to be people that run these machines, and uh, you can't do it without without training. You got to have some sort of a certificate or something to do it. When people ask, they come in and say, "What is the prerequisite for this?" The prerequisite really is for a passion. I mean, this is this is the most expensive equipment that a manufacturer would have in his shop. So that means. Um, you're working on it, so that, so you got to be, you've got to take ownership. So I, I tell everybody, you got to, you got to be beyond the average working guy. You know, to go in there and just does his job and goes home. I mean, I've always, this is all I've ever done. I came right out of high school, went in and started doing this, 
and I learned right off, you know, they got a, you're working with million dollars, probably multi-million dollar pieces of equipment. So you have to think of it as your own because if you wreck it, you know, that's down and every minute that's down, that's time is money. So they, that's how they look at it. So they want someone who <clears throat> has that kind of intensity. It's, it's just a different level of people that, that are going to get paid good money to do this.